time to rejoice in the word. Coming to you live from the beautiful studio at our world headquarters, it's Rejoice in the Word with Bishop George Bloomer. Featuring Craig Mizell and the Rejoice in the Word Band. Tonight, we have Drs. Deborah Morton and Bryce Brooks, Bishop Raymond Brown, and Evangelist Regina Howard. With music from Philip Carter with SOB and David Mateo and One Accord. And now, coming to the stage is your host, Bishop George Bloomer. We're going to Atlanta, uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. Put your hands together for Regina Howard. Now that, now that, that's the walk down music I've been waiting for all night long. Well, there's nothing fake about this. This is what it is, and we come to rejoice in the word on tonight. Come on, audience, let's put your hands together for my yeah. guest evangelist, Regina Howard. And listen, you wrote a book. I'm going to get right into it because I don't want to mess with any of your time. You wrote a book entitled, and the book kind of jumped out at me, Secrets in the Pew. Yes. And I wrote a book entitled Witchcraft in the Pew. Yes. So then you got Witchcraft in the Pew, you got Secrets in the Pew. We're going to find out what's going on with this pew. <laughs> Woman Amen. of God, tell us a little bit about your ministry first before we go into the discussion, discussing of your book. <laughs> well, I praise God and I thank you for the opportunity, Bishop. Yes. And God bless you. And well, we are and have been called, and I say we, because I share ministry with my awesome, magnificent husband who's here tonight. And I thank God for him, Minister James Howard. And uh, of course, we share in radio yes. and other facets of the uh, media as well. You know, one good turn deserves another. And I came on your program, and now you're here on my program. <laughs> yes, I praise God. Isn't it good? Every seed bears fruit after its kind. Yes. Uh -huh. And also, we, um, I am an evangelist, the author, and the founder of the Wailing Wives Intercessory Prayer Ministry. The Wailing Wives yes, yes. Intercessory Prayer, Prayer Ministry. Ministry. Yes, we you call You got to talk about that, Wailing Wives. <laughs> what are the wives wailing about? Their husbands their and husbands their marriages. And their we, marriages. They call in every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Good marriages? Or, or, or No matter what's going on in their marriage. Okay. You said I do. Uh -huh. You said I would. Uh -huh. And so now we will. Okay. We will go before God. To make sure that you do, to make sure and you, you will. Do. Yes, okay. yes, yes. <laughs> can't, always, can't always say, my husband did. Well, right. What did you do, or what, what are you not doing yes. that can contribute to making your marriage a successful marriage? Wonderful. What God ordains, the covenants that come before God, I believe, are supposed to be victorious. Yes. The enemy is tricking the world, mm -hmm. but I stand today and I declare that God-ordained marriages will succeed we will not bow down to the enemy, and we certainly won't run away with our tails between our legs. We will fight and fight and fight some more. And how do we do that? We pray. We don't fight each other. Mm -hmm. Husbands don't fight wives, mm -hmm. and wives don't fight husbands. We don't slap them, mm -mm. but we go to the Word of God. And let and the Word slap them. Let the Word do the work. <laughs> Amen. I, let the Word I, do the work. I've been slapped by the Word, so I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. And so we pray every Wednesday morning. We pray for ourselves to make sure that we're what God is calling for as a wife in this last hour and then we prayed that God would make our husbands or allow them to recognize who they're supposed to be in him. Amen. I, God bless you. I understand that you've written a, a novel, so this is not your first book. It's not my first This book. is the first novel that you've written. Novel. What inspired you to write a novel? Mm -hmm. 
just the gift that's of writing that's in, within me. As I looked back over the years of my life, I had this thing with paper mm -hmm. and pens. Mm -hmm. I just used to like to collect them and have them. I thought notebooks were nice, and I was like, well, something's got to be wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Every time I go to the store, I want to buy a notebook mm -hmm. or I want to buy pens. And then I began to write. I started with poetry. And this particular book, I was at work, and the first line of the book just came to my spirit, and I just wrote it down. It was not any particular person that inspired me, but it was all God-inspired. All God-inspired. So this just came for the, the, uh, the title just came? Just came. As I began to write, mm -hmm. then the title came to me, Secret in the Pew. Wow. Yeah. You snatched Secret my next pew. question for me. <laughs> <laughs> so God gave you the title? Yes, he did. Absolutely. Yes, he did. And, and what would you like to... Uh, um, what would you like your readers to get from this book? That they can be set free from secrets. Secrets keep us so, in bondage. So, so, so let's go back. The, okay. The, 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 uh, all right. So the book is about secrets. Yes. Okay. What kind of secrets? If it's, you can give, a, 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 a give us like one of those, <laughs> what they call in the literary market, a teaser. A teaser. Mm -hmm. It's about a young lady whose name is Passion Taylor. Her life is all together. Great job. Has her own home. She's not waiting on a man to come along for her to be established. She is established. She's in the church, but she has a secret. And you know, sometimes as women, we'll say yes to the first one that says, girl, you are so cute. Mm -hmm. Girl, you are so fine. Mm -hmm. But that's not always right. Mm -hmm. That's not what we need. We need that encouragement. We need those accolades, but we gotta make sure it's coming from the right one. Yes. And sometimes we fall for the counterfeit mm -hmm. before God sends us who's really supposed to be in yes. our lives. Yes. And so she has a secret. This was her college sweetheart, but everybody in her family thinks that that's over. She has a very close relationship with her family. They pride themselves on that. And she wants to, in her own life, have that same connection. And so with this secret on the side, this young man on the side, we say, why do church girls have to deal with bad boys? Mm -hmm. Well, he's not designed for her. Mm -hmm. And as she goes on, God often gives her a warning. So her secret is this bad guy? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so God has, gives her warning after warning. Does she fall with this bad guy? Yes, she does, Bishop. Okay. Does she, does she give in to this bad guy? Yes, sometimes and she does, Does Bishop. he drive her away from God? Not completely. He actually drives her to God. To God. And she's established and renewed her relationship with God. And in the midst of that... God shows her who actually is supposed to be for her. Okay. Because he's already a man of God. He's praying for her, and she doesn't even she know doesn't he's even praying know for her. She's not. And God uses, uses this young man in her life. Mm -hmm. And so what the secret can be damaging. Mm -hmm. And in the end, instead of her being obedient, not sweeping it under the rug, because mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't bring closure to things in our lives. Mm -hmm. We'll sweep them up under the rug and just say, if I say in Jesus' name, it's just going to be gone. But there's mm -hmm. a work that we have to do as well as people of God. We've got to get rid of some things. We've got to speak to those things I think, and, and cast them off. I think that there was something... I think... Amen. I think that there was something that was very, very powerful that was mentioned tonight, and I want to go back to it again, because here's this person who has it all together and everything is going good, mm -hmm. and um, they're asking the Lord to send them someone, mm -hmm. but they're, again, asking God in a casual way. Casual way. And uh, uh, the first lady said that, you know, God is not interested in casual... No, he's not. Uh, you know, and so this is... When you casually deal with God, mm -hmm. you don't earnestly seek Him. Right. When you when you don't fervently pray, right. any voice you hear, you tend to believe that yes. it is God. This is where the counterfeit comes okay. from. Mm -hmm. I, I just I, I just so much is wrapped around that theme and that mm -hmm. thought. And for you, know, you didn't speak to her, she didn't speak to you. The book is already written, and yet that whole mm -hmm. piece is in your book. How that you can just really, really be in church, be around God, mm -hmm. and miss Him all the time. Because mm -hmm. as Pastor Morton said, uh, you don't know Him. Right. And so all of these themes are coming together tonight because the Lord wants you to know Him in yes. the power of His might, mm -hmm. and He doesn't want you in a casual relationship with Him. Right. My God, my God, my God. So um, people that are keeping secrets, put them in what position with God? 
it puts a, it actually puts them in a good position, a position to understand that God can deliver them and that God can set them free. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but God has given us one another. And one reason people keep secrets and, and they sit in the church, on the pew, right next to many of those that are in the audience, they don't share the secrets because they don't want to be mishandled. They don't want to be judged. And see, sometimes you're judged, but you're getting set free. People can think what they want to think. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're free, your heart is right, you've come before God, you're put, you're coming to God, you're going to, you may come to God dirty, but you're going to walk away clean. Yes, yes, yes. And so you can't care about what people think. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like that principle about grace. And, you know, there's this mm -hmm. new message of grace being preached that is really, really uh, a false teaching. Uh, but the grace, true grace, uh, receives you as you are, but it doesn't keep you as you are. Right. There, right. there, there, there will be a change. Uh, we're down to our final seconds. I want to ask you this question. What does God think about secrets? We shouldn't have them because he's there. He's there. He died for our secrets. He nailed them to the cross. We need to expose secrets because the enemy keeps us trapped when we walk around with secrets. He keeps us in bondage. So God doesn't want us to walk around in bondage. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Walk therefore in your liberty and make the devil out of a liar. I will not be bound by the lies that you have spoken to me. Who I was is just that, who I was. But who I am now is a new creature in God, and he has given me the authority to take the devil by the horns and snatch him bald-headed because he's a liar. So I won't walk around holding any secrets anymore, and I declare that you'll be free tonight. Let it go. Find somebody you can trust. Confidence. You can trust God. And that, God will lead you to the right person to talk to. That's the only one you should have secrets yes. with. He that dwelleth in the secret places of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Won't you put your hands together for my guests on tonight's show? And you know, let me say this, that secrets in the pew is a way that you can enter into that intimate place with God and get free from those yokes and bondages that are holding you bound. And guess what? Every member of our audience is going home with one of these tonight. Yay! That's right. Yeah, The View and Oprah, y'all ain't the only one. Yeah, yeah, you get one and you get one and you get one.